Uh, we have a lot of history in our neighborhood. The people in the neighborhood, uh, they uh, are great people. Friendly, friendly, friendly. There's a strong sense of community. We are a neighborhood who care about each other. Everybody knows everybody. I feel like when you go to the grocery store to pick up a bottle of milk, you're in there for 45 minutes visiting with neighbors. My neighborhood is has a very cohesive feeling. We have been described almost sometimes as being clannish, but we work very well together. We look out for each other. We interact with the uh, community policing, and also we interact with many agencies of the city. I consider ourselves a small town community atmosphere in a big city environment. The thing that I'm most proud of is the fact that we have a, a real treasure in the fact that we have so many different diverse cultures in our neighborhood. Uh, we have a tremendous number of new immigrants from all over the world, uh, different languages and different uh, practices in their families and in their uh, uh, gardening and the way they keep their homes and the way they raise their families. So I would say the diversity is the treasure that we have in our neighborhood. A lot of people aren't aware that Strawberry Hill had um, more people per capita served in World War II than anywhere in the world. And we had, from one block alone, we had 64 people and it had never been really noticed or much attention paid to it. So we built this memorial for them and it was long overdue. And they were very, very thrilled. We even had donations from the church because they were so happy that we were doing it. And as you can see, it turned out beautiful. My neighborhood really is downtown, downtown Kansas City, Kansas. And I'm really proud of the Improvement District and what we've been able to do with the Improvement District and in changing the, the safety and uh, security of our downtown, really trying to change the perception most folks see of Kansas City, Kansas. Back in the day, about 15 years ago, maybe 16 or 17 years ago, when neighbors, community members, used to come down here and together we would march up and down Central Avenue here, and we would march in a unified effort to bring attention to crime and our, uh, our disgust with crime and the fact that we are fed up with the, uh, with the common turn your head atmosphere that was going on in our city. And we wanted people to start taking back the streets and we wanted people to start being more active and not laying down and letting the bad guys run us over. The neighborhood group was organized approximately 17, 18 years ago. Whoever came up with the idea of having community policing and neighborhood groups, uh, I'm very happy with them because it's a wonderful project that they have taken upon their shoulders to get all the neighbors together so that we can work together and see accomplishments in our neighborhood. And when we implemented community policing, it was an era where we began to earn people's trust back. And we wanted to open up new doors of communication and break down some of those barriers of lack of trust and get people to believe in us again. And one of the ways we did that was to go into our neighborhoods and begin to form neighborhood watch groups. About three years ago, um, all the businesses down here kind of got together and said, look, we want to change the perception of Kansas City, Kansas. We want to encourage more business, more uh, residents, and uh, for people to come down and really take advantage of what's going on in our downtown. And so they pooled their dollars and allowed me to actually manage an improvement district, which we have a clean and safe approach. We have security officers on uh, from about 7.30 to 5.30 every day. We have a cleaning team that comes in around 7.30 and stays till about 2. And what we do is we really are trying to make sure that downtown can compete with any other region business-wise um, to encourage folks to come down and feel confident that someone's going to be there for them and that they can shop and enjoy our businesses and be able to um, really enjoy downtown. With uh, the 1951 flood um, kind of wiped out that 
that sense of community and history there, but it, we're trying to rebuild it now, and it, and it is getting a lot better. One of our largest programs is our summer rec program, and this year we served over 100 kids every day for six weeks, and those kids coming together, we have younger kids that attend a camp, and then we have the older kids that are our team leaders, and they were actually paid to supervise it, and the there were so many families there that attended this program that it, it really got a sense of community. It was great to have that, that sense again, and hopefully we can continue to build the sense of community. Well, this is Waterway Park, of course. Uh, it's located about 11th of Grandview in Kansas City, Kansas. It has a very storied history. It's about 100 years old, maybe a little bit older than that. And uh, this park uh, existed for many years as a place of recreation for people in the neighborhood. And then sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, this park became a place that wasn't very friendly anymore. And uh, people uh, that we didn't necessarily want in our neighborhoods uh, began hanging out in this park and made it a little bit unsafe, particularly after, not, after uh, certain times at night. And about seven years ago, uh, CHWC, the Unified Government, and uh, LISC of Greater Kansas City got together to make it better. And since that time, it's been really a nice place. It's been very clean and a nice place to visit. Well, I got to thinking about that and thought that, you know, many of these kids that live in these neighborhoods may not have the opportunity to visit national parks, may not have the opportunity to travel to places where they have a lot of outdoor wilderness and camping and things like that. So I wanted to see if there was a way to create that within their own neighborhoods that they live in. Get them outside, get them moving around, getting them to enjoy these open spaces one to another. And the other thing that drove me is that our population is changing in this community, as many urban communities across the country. Uh, we have new people moving into this from other countries, from other states, other cities. In some instances, we don't speak the same languages, have the same religious uh, backgrounds or anything. And we have to have opportunities to gather together, to be together in low-risk environments where we can get to know each other. And I thought a park would be a great place to do that. Well, the, the years, years that I've been here, the, when I first came on, there was a, a definite division uh, among uh, different uh, cultures, you might say. We have the original, what I call the tenacious survivors that have been in the area for years. They grew up, they're usually living in their home that they were born in. Uh, sometimes they live in uh, homes that they built when they were first married or they bought when they were first married and they've been here for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. And then we have our, our new immigrants, our new arrivals, I call new residents in the area. And there was quite a division between them and it wasn't just a language barrier, it was more of a cultural barrier. But I noticed that quite a few of the younger people uh, have taken some interest in being responsible for certain projects. So I think that's quite an accomplishment. I think there's some things that we could do so much better. Uh, the future that I see or the vision I see is us working together uh, to overcome uh, some of these divides that we've had. We don't want to change cultures. We don't want to uh, change how they live or, or how they practice their their uh, uh, business or how they uh, carry, uh, uh, carry on with their families, but we do want to work together as a community so that we can work uh, uh, to better the community. In uh, 2007, uh, we decided that we would have a community garden. Uh, very little funding, they literally cut all the funding off, but we're a neighborhood group, we kind of do things on our own, so we were able to get seed, uh, the fence. We had a good friend by the name of Joe Jennings, who was a friend of this neighborhood group. He had a vacant lot that had this fence around it, so we were able to get the, the fence. Plus, uh, I'm very active with a youth group called Youth Bill. And so they were able to come and put the fence up. We have pictures and everything. And so we have uh, people who chip in to uh, put the uh, seeds in and plant the, uh, the garden. There was a gentleman by the name of James Parham and who the, there's a sign on the fence uh, there that we just named the garden after him. But we uh, plant a number of things here in the garden like tomatoes, okra, cucumbers, squash. And, uh, and we give it to first the members of our neighborhood group have access to the vegetables first. Then once we finish that, we then uh, give it to 
uh, other people within our neighborhood group. We don't sell anything. So, uh, it, it, and it works well. Well, my vision is that we continue to be a community that's constantly growing and changing and that we um, become a community where people can find the healthy choice to be the easy choice. So where it's easier to walk to the grocery store um, than to buy chips or french fries at a fast food restaurant. Um, my vision is that kids have a place to go after school that's safe and welcoming, um, that adults can find answers to any of the community problems that they have and feel connected to their neighbors and to the rest of the community. Um, I dream about an area that's crime free, that people feel safe walking outside. Our crime stats are obviously way down this year and Rosedale has done excellent with that, but I think there's still um, some perceptions perceptions of crime that you know we need to fight but I really just want to see everyone be able to live in a community where um, they are able to make the healthy choice the easy choice and able to be an active part and be an active voice in their community. Because I moved back to the neighborhood where I, I as a child that's where I grew up in fact I lived at a corner from um, my mother's house, which is still there, there are only four houses on the block. But so when I, but you know, I, I see something different. When I when I go there, I see something from as a child. I remember how it used to be. I also do gardening and that type of thing. So it's it's very nice on certain days like today, to be able to go out and actually work in the dirt and look up in the sky and, and you know if you can get away from sometimes the immediate environment and take it another level, then the memories do come back. I, I remember the fruit trees that used to be there. I remember playing uh, hide and seek with my friends. And uh, I remember the people who used to live there. I remember the buses that would come and down the street and all the fond memories. I remember that. So yeah, I do. I do quite often because I'm very fortunate. There was a point in my life where I could have lived anywhere where I wanted to live. And, and I returned like many others to take care of my parents and so forth. And I figure that when you take your last breath, you're only gonna take up so much space anyway. And more than likely, you're not gonna even have your final resting place where you live. So, you know, might as well be someplace where you can try to make a difference for some of those kids 